Hello, this is Minder Chen. I'm a professor of management information system at CSU Channel Island Martin Business School of Business Economics. In this lecture, we're going to talk about enterprise architecture and IT infrastructure. Uh, in the following lecture, we're going to talk about um, cloud computing. So let's look at the big picture. Uh, what is so-called uh, enterprise architecture? Uh, enterprise architecture is really try to give you a big picture uh, such that you can create a blueprint to help your um, your IT planning, information technology, information systems planning. So it's really a information technology planning tool. And we started with business strategy, formula your business strategy, and then try to realize what kind of business process may be necessary to help you to carry out the business strategy. Formulate your IT strategy, which uh, would be able to support the business capability that may be required by your uh, predefined business processes earlier. And the IT strategy would drive the development of IT solution, which uh, will certainly in return support those business capability. And <clears throat> so we, we need to, in our enterprise architecture, we need to have um, flexibility, resilience, and, and take chances in terms of some of the emerging technology. And also, uh, it's the people, the process, and the information, and also the relationship between IT and business together that is driving a successful enterprise architecture effort. We need to focus on the IT governance issue, like who make the decision, who is responsible, accountable, in terms of planning execution of um, our IT plan. You need to take a portfolios approach, which means we have uh, a cluster of application or technology that we need to uh, develop and, and then you kind of invest in, um, in, in a portfolio of set of application. Um, so you don't put all your eggs in one basket. You need to focus on the business and technical as well as information architecture. Also thinking about the sourcing, uh, which means like, are you going to build it in-house or outsource? And eventually, you need to justify your um, investment uh, from a cost-benefit, cost-values viewpoint, uh, such that you can prioritize various opportunity that you may have identified in your enterprise uh, architecture. Uh, this is quite a complicated diagram but I like it I like it for the following reason it it's actually it, it's almost like a model to help you to think about the whole enterprise in general this to some extent you don't have to even consider IT as part of this framework this is by John Zegman used to work for IBM he's considered the father of enterprise um, the creator of the enterprise architecture and so this is called Zegman's Framework. And you can find a PDF version of this here. And without looking at the detail, because it would take a long time to explain everything in detail, uh, basically the framework has row and column. Okay. The, the, the row here, different layers here, indicating a different level of abstraction and detail. Okay, that you can look at uh, an enterprise from very high level, from the planner's view, look at the whole context and, and the scope. And look at the conceptual level, look at the business model from who is the owner of that business process function unit. And then from the designer's viewpoint, just consider logically how you should implement this. And eventually physically, from the technical viewpoint, how you should how certain things should be implemented. 
and eventually very detailed representation, almost like a blueprint in, in building a house. Uh, the blueprint for uh, give it to the plumber, okay, to the carpenter, okay, to the general contractor, um, and or a general contractor actually will give those blueprint, um, which they may have obtained from the architect, to give it to the subcontractor to implement um, what need to be done. So that's the level of abstraction, and it's very useful. It depends who you talk to, you use the right level of abstraction and re representation to communicate. Okay, communication is important here to communicate with those stakeholders who are involved in, in planning, execution, or controlling of the enterprise architecture. So on the, on the on the column side, we have six columns. The original model actually has only three columns. Data, function, network, or geographic. Okay. If you're thinking about information system, it's, it's actually about data processing. Data and processing. Data and processing. And then you have a distributed system, then you need to use network to connect them together. That's geographic, location, network. Okay. And Zekman over time extended three more columns to this enterprise architecture. He included people, time, timing, control. People here may involve people, organizational, organizational structure, and motivation, performance measure. Okay. One easy way to kind of help us to remember the six columns is actually look at what I have here for you is the 5W and 1H um, approach. We'll take the easy one. Uh, people is who, time is when, controlling, when to do what, okay. When to do, how, how to do things, that's function. Network, location is where. Motivation, why you want to do this, what's your motivation, and what you try to achieve, and, and the performance measure, understand why, why this need to be done. Okay. So what's left? Okay, what's left is what? Okay, what do we need to know? Okay, what do we know? Okay, what can we predict? Okay, and that's data, and that's information, and that's knowledge. Okay, they all belong to this what column. Okay, so it's data which is what, function that is how, network that's where, people is who, people organization that's who, and time and controlling, control is when, and the motivation, performance, goal, goal, performance, motivation, that's why. Okay, and then in each of the cell here indicating what kind of documentation, diagram, model, abstract model that we need to create to describe the column for stakeholder user on this row. Okay. And so this can be a very powerful planning tool to give you a comprehensive understanding of what's happening in enterprise. Uh, let me just give you an example um, of how you may connect the dots. Let's put it this way. You may be thinking about analyzing a business process function, and you may want to break it down into smaller processes based on the functions or application. And then, but if you look at this functional process, um, you need to think about what data does the process need in order to perform their job. And so, so you need to make sure the data and the function are uh, consistent in what each one of them has to do. And also you need to say, who, where should those function be executed? Okay, be performed. And who may be the user or person in charge of this process or function. 
and when certain things has to be done, when certain activity may be under the process and function need to be executed. And last, not the least, is some of the performance measure, business rule that govern the um, the execution of those processes has to be uh, clearly specified with performance measure. So you can, as you can see now, this five W one H. Okay, they all have to be supporting each other, be consistent with each other, at the same level of abstraction. Okay, when you try to model it. IBM Business Consulting Service uh, created uh, another tool called Heatmap, different than Zegman's um, Enterprise Architecture Framework. Uh, in, in this case, um, we have three layer or three um, levels uh, on the row that we have here. It's direct, which is planning, control, and execution. It's a simple, almost like um, quality control um, paradigm. Okay, you do, you plan, you act it out, and then you control it. Okay, so that's the accountability level, and we got five column. The five column really indicate uh, first of all. Point out your customer. Okay, you need customers related information. Some general business administrative function. Okay. In the middle is you got products, services that you need to um, produce, and you need to rely on channel to sell it, to offer your service or sell your product, and eventually logistic to move your products. Um, from your warehouse to your customer's doorstep. We call this heat map. It means once we lay out different the building block to fill up this heat map, then we need to find out what are the urgent needs that you may have. And you highlight it, in this case color code it. So eventually you find out those are the area that may you may have a problem which need to be fixed or it's area which will give you a lot of potential benefit so you need to give them higher priority okay so let's switch gear a little bit uh, so that's just a brief lecture on enterprise architecture it's a blueprint to help you to plan your IT system application and infrastructure but you may ask what is it infrastructure the it infrastructure is by the definition this is from some research from mit is the hardware software telecommunication networking system or equipment together provide the underlying foundation to support the organization's goal so it's hardware software networking and how you put it together serve as a foundation to support the organization's goal in terms of building uh, enterprise-wide application or some unique local applications if you have a solid IT infrastructure it's easier for you to build up specific application that you may have in mind uh, a lot of company may not have a solid IT infrastructure. When they try to build an application, they need to invest in beefing up its IT infrastructure. Okay, and the investment on those infrastructure, since infrastructure are considered to be shared across the enterprise, so your investment um, in the local application, which requires some upgrade of the infrastructure that investment on the in IT infrastructure portion should be evaluated and justified separately because it's a shared um, resources down the road. Okay. 
And otherwise, you say, oh, we need we need this much money up here. We need a lot of investment here. Then you may consider that's too expensive. But but that kind of, and you want to charge it all to a, a line of business manager for that local application development effort, which includes additional investment in IT infrastructure. That's just not fair. Okay. This is um, just another clustering of um, capability in the integrated IT infrastructure. Application infrastructure, data management, communication, security, risk management, channel management, uh, IT facility management, um, define IT architecture, which is what we're doing here, and conform to standard if all possible, and eventually infrastructure allow you to work with partners um, outside your firm. So let me um, just use this um, particular um, web-based IT infrastructure, or sometimes we just call it application architectures example to show you a, a little bit lower, um, a little bit more specific situation. Okay. How many piece of equipment um, system need to get involved? This is a kind of an N tier or three tier application architecture. You're building a web-based application. So what do you need in order to make it work? Okay. This is what it is. Um, your client probably need a browser, which is kind of a no-brainer nowadays. Need to go through the internet. Okay, internet there. Are two layer of it one is the traditional internet which run tcp ip and then we have the World Wide web which is running a communication protocol called http when the user come to uh, your website they probably need to go through a firewall for security purpose in order to hit your st uh, and then they hit your web server the web server may render a page which will be displayed on the client's or user's browser. A web server, if you want to handle data submitted by the user or dynamically, the keywords dynamically, um, render some data from your database behind the scene, then most likely will have a so-called application server, which will run dynamic business logic which has been implemented in their software component stored on the application server. So the program on the server side, on the application server, will talk to the database, which is managed by a database management system. And sometimes the application server may need to talk to enterprise, um, enterprise kind of application package, software packages. If we use the three-tier application architecture example and, and then use this triangle, which in, which imply an application has three aspects, user interface, data, and process. Okay, so what is user interface? Some people actually will say that's where the user are going to see. Okay, it's really um, generated, probably HTML, dynamic generated on your web server or even your application server which return to the client and render on their browser. So that's the user interface. That's what the users see. The process most likely running here on the application server. Application server here. And the data stored on another server. Actually, they may be a so-called database server, which is really housing the DMS software and store the data. So that's actually the third layer. So we have user interface layer, business logic, business process layer, and then the data layer. Uh, some people actually consider separate the data processing logic as another layer, and then the database is actually the fourth layer. That's why sometimes we refer to this as N layers. Okay, so um, that's it. We're going to just stop here, and we'll continue and discuss the evolution of IT infrastructure towards uh, cloud computing. Thank you. Bye-bye.